Flowers have fascinated and delighted us since time immemorial. And with around 400,000 species of flowering plants in existence, there are huge differences in their forms, sizes and colours. Flowering plants are called angiosperm. It's a Greek word simply meaning a vessel to carry seeds. And these flowering plants over years have evolved not only to look good for us, but to attract bees and other insects, and also to help the spread of pollen. Inflorescence, that's the word that describes how flowers are arranged on the plant, and there's many different types of them. This poppy is a good example of a single flower on a single stem, so that makes it a single or a solitary inflorescence. In the next category are the indeterminate inflorescences, starting with racemes. And it occurs where flowers grow along a stem with the oldest growth at the base and the newest growth at the top. Like these rhododendrons, and they form clusters of flowers from one main stem. This cluster here has got at least 10 or 15 flowers, all coming from that one stem. The panicle type has multiple clusters on several branches, things like the Himalayan butterfly bush or buddleia. This is a spike, and it's where the individual flowers do not have their own stems. They grow directly from the main stem. It's a gladioli. Within this type are also spadix, where the spikes are really tightly packed. A thick spike is protected by a colourful bract, like the peace lily or the monstera. And then there's the umbel, like this parsley, and it's a beauty. The little stems from the flower heads are about equal length and they come from one central point, so it makes the head nice and even. It's a lovely shape, like an umbrella. In fact, if you look at it from behind, they are like the ribs of an umbrella. I think it's a beauty. Isn't nature amazing? This iberus, or candy tuft, is a carim, which means it has a flower cluster with lower stalks that are a little bit longer, so they form a flat or convex head. The last type in the indeterminate group is the capitulum. It looks like one big flower head, but it's actually many tiny flowers, all packed onto the same flower head, the capitulum. The third and final category of inflorescence is the determinate, or cymose. And the main thing to look at, this is the little helpful hint, is that each main stem will have a flower on it. And things like the aquilegia are a really good example. I don't expect you to learn all the different flower types off by heart, but it is useful to be aware of how many different types there are. Do remember, the more variety in the flower types that you have, the more pollinators you'll bring to your garden, and it's a win for everyone. <laughs>